Hello, everybody. Uh, so welcome to this uh, prelude of the combined uh, Digital Publishing Summit and uh, Readmagine. Let me uh, present uh, today's speakers first. Uh, so we've got Cristina Musileni. Cristina is a general secretary of uh, the Fondazione LIA. She is also a board member of uh, IDR Lab and co-chair of the W3C Publishing Business Group. Uh, Gregorio Pellegrino is an Italian computer engineer with a strong knowledge in digital publishing with a particular expertise on um, uh, accessibility for visually impaired people. And Paolo Casarini is uh, the digital development and IT manager at Il Mulino, uh, which is one of the main academic publishers in Italy. So in this session, we will present the consultancy and the training activities offered by LIA on accessibility matters and the case study of the Societa Editrice Il Mulino, uh, who launched a new accessible version of its uh, platform for academic uh, students. So you are listening to this webinar via Swapcard, an event app, on a PC or a mobile device. So on the right of your screen, on, uh, or uh, somewhere on the mobile uh, uh, view, you see a panel section where you can chat during or after the session. And you can also ask questions for the QA session. You can also answer to a poll uh, that uh, Leah has prepared. So please use the question tab to write and push up the questions you would like to, uh, to really ask to the speakers during the QA session. Thank you. I give the floor to Christina, Gregorio, and Paolo. Thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to be here. I know that we have some very good friends outside the uh, private room where we are speaking. And um, so let's start speaking about accessibility and uh, what we do. Uh, why accessibility is important? Uh, I think that accessibility right now have many reasons to be considered. First of all, because uh, there is a different context from some years ago producing accessible publication or website or app is not only a need uh, to put the user at the center of the design, uh, is not only an ethical reason, but there are new legislation that uh, are in, um, upcoming in the, next, uh, in the next few years. And I think it's important to be prepared also for this uh, reason. The other very important uh, reason is that accessibility is quality. If you produce an accessible content publication website app, the quality is higher for every user. Accessibility means that all the users get a better product or services. And uh, the other important thing is that everybody has the same opportunity. Every reader, including people with print disability, can access the same content at the same time with the same technology. So I think this is the main, these are the most important thing you have to consider and take care in while listening to our presentation. Uh, we have a, experienced a very difficult period, all of us, but uh, we have uh, uh, had the signal that the visual impaired people has had even more difficult problems because most of the content and the website that are available right now on the market are not accessible. So they have problem in accessing in very important information we, in Italy, we have uh, uh, been informed that some of the most important information on how to cope with the distance uh, uh, rules and so on were done in inaccessible PDF or inaccessible graphics or infographic, 
that they had no uh, image description at all. So this is something that is very important. Also, the uh, school uh, had had problems in Italy. All the schools were closed, so uh, uh, online teaching has become normal, and most of the content uh, or the platform were not accessible. So this is an additional issue for visual impair and students in school. The other thing that it's uh, very, very important, uh, Gregorio, can, may you move the slide? Um, so this is what I have already said. Then the other, uh, just few information about the number of people that uh, uh, have disabled the print impaired disability in Europe. These are the la la latest number from ABU. And uh, I think it's a very important target group and we cannot uh, avoid to considering them as any other uh, user or uh, customer that we have uh, from the publisher point of view. There are, um, Gregorio? Who is Fondazione Lia? Fondazione Lia is a quite strange animal it's a no-profit organization that has been created by the Italian Publisher Association in 2014 in collaboration with the Italian Blind Union. And recently we have also included as members the Italian Dyslexis Association and the specialist organization producing a textbook that is the Biblioteca dei Cecchi Regina Margherita of Monza as institutional member. So we represent all the organizations that are involved in uh, publishing accessibility. Uh, our mission is to promote the possibility to every person to read the same product at the same time uh, with the same uh, um, technology and channel that any other reader. And all our work is based on research and technological innovation. Uh, we have also uh, a large group of publishers who are members of the association. We have all the biggest one in Italy, but also some specialized one like uh, Il Mulino or uh, some very small one like uh, uh, Il Frangente that is a very small publisher focused on sailing and everything that is related with uh, uh, using boats and so on. And we also have um, another important uh, piece that is uh, Media Library Online, that is the most important Italian organization who works for library loans. So we offer the same opportunity, not only in, in the field of buying and access content, but also in the field of getting books from library as any other reader. We are part of the international network of organization working on accessibility. We are member of W3C, member of ADR Lab, and also member of DAISY Consortium, and we actively participate in the most important working group. We believe this is one of the most important thing because we are always updated and we can offer to the people we work with the most uh, updated information information and we can also update them on what's going on at international level that is quite difficult for a publisher or for a smaller organization to do because they are focused on other things so our role is also to provide information to them we don't work only with publisher but we work also with institution and for example we are part of the consultancy board of the Italian uh, organization representing all the bank, ABI, but we also work with uh, uh, some bank or with uh, also insurance company who want to have uh, uh, their publication accessible. Uh, also because they are also interested by the new legislation that will uh, come in the next year. Uh, the new legislation we are, that I think is very important and it's in, for the publishing industry is the Euro, European so-called Accessibility Act is a new directive that has been um, published in last year and should be implemented in member state by 2000, 
22 and should be um, applied to all the new product and service that are uh, provided in the European market by June 2025. Um, the all product and service that appear on the EU market means also product that are distributed by international organization and uh, to a European user. The uh, main uh, scope of the directive is to harmonize the regulation within the different member states and uh, remove the obstacles that are now in place because there are many different requirements or many different uh, legislation. Uh, it's important for the publishing industry because there are a lot of other uh, product and service, but uh, ebooks and all the digital uh, distribution value chain is included. This means that all the actor in the distribution, in the production and distribution of ebooks uh, should comply with the requirement of the directive. Uh, that means publisher, distributor, online retailers, e-commerce site, platform, uh, reading solution, either uh, if they are device or software solution, DRM and uh, metadata. The legislation uh, foresee mandatory compliance to define uh, standard requirement. Some are already available in the legislation, some will be defined uh, before the uh, uh, directive uh, come in force in 2025. Uh, there is the possibility to foresee the um, certification process and also there will be some European and national um, enforcement authorities to verify that the uh, directive is correctly implemented. There are some exemptions for micro enterprises, for some kind of books uh, like comics, art books, kids book, that should be uh, accessible to the state of the art of the accessibility requirement. That means that they should comply with what is possible for them. And if someone uh, can uh, demonstrate that there is a disproportionate burden to create accessibility, accessible content. Uh, but uh, uh, lack of knowledge and lack of time are not uh, uh, considered um, uh, uh, possible escape to the uh, implementation of the uh, directive. Um, so it's important for us, if you can answer the poll, to have some information about you. We would like to know which is the role you play in the ecosystem and if you have already uh, working on accessibility in your organization or in your uh, as a, by yourself. So if you, you can, can find the poll in the swap up card. Uh, Thank you. Swap. Yeah. And uh, this is because what is required by the European Accessibility Act is the creation of an accessible digital Eco publishing ecosystem where every actor has a role. Uh, everyone should be involved uh, in different uh, role, in different uh, position. They should take care of some of the different aspects, but all the actors should comply with the legislation. Um, I don't want to go in detail, the slide will be available so you can then read more in detail uh, this information. Uh, the other important thing is everything that um, should comply with this legislation should be what is designed for all in architecture and in other situation in the publishing's name born accessible. That means that you need to define a process including accessibility since the very first phase of the production. Uh, you should uh, adopt the international standard uh, as a reference and also you need to provide to the end user information about the fact uh, uh, about the level of accessibility of what you provide. So the end user should know before using a content or a platform if, the, um, if it is accessible for the need. Um, so what we do? 
uh, we do uh, many things. Our role is to help the publishing industry to uh, become fully accessible. So we do some different activity. Uh, we do a consultancy training and we also have some tool. Uh, the main, uh, the most important thing I, th I think we do is to help organization to understand what they have to do and to define a strategy uh, that could be a process. Uh, I don't think that everyone will be able to uh, cope with all the requirements, uh, just pushing a button. So it's important that all the organization is uh, um, involved, is a strategic choice for the, for the publisher or for the organization. And uh, uh, all the uh, actors should be involved, even the people working in the commercial uh, marketing uh, uh, area, not only the people working on the production. Uh, because uh, it's something that you can offer to your customer. And so all the, the segment of the publisher department of the publishing uh, organization should be involved. I leave the field to Gregorio, who will explain more in detail the technical part of what we do. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Christina. Yeah, so uh, one of the... Uh, consultancy we we are doing right now which which are really really important since since a lot of um, reading uh, has moved uh, to online reading and digital reading is the audit for uh, uh, digital applications and for uh, websites we are specialized uh, I, I will show you uh, in a brief uh, on uh, uh, checking the accessibility of uh, reading solution on of digital reading solutions. So how we structure the accessibility audit and the accessibility remediation. Um, we start with a first audit to check the software. So the reading solution, the website as is. Uh, and we uh, make a list of all the problems uh, we, we found. Then we uh, start a remediation phase where we have three main activities. One is to train the developers and then designers on how to make uh, uh, fully accessible user interfaces. Uh, then we help them uh, to fix the accessibility bugs. We have a, a platform for making help desk so we can uh, help them on the job on how to fix uh, uh, release from the small bugs to the to the biggest one and then when they finish their work we make another audit to check the work done uh, usually it takes maybe two or three uh, iterations to have the software fully accessible but then we know that the softwares are uh, uh, alive i mean uh, they are developed uh, continuously, so we program a uh, uh, yearly or biannual. It, it depends. Uh, check to to uh, make to be sure that uh, the continuous developments uh, do not create problems with accessibility. So when a new company start a, an accessibility audit, they will start a path to to check their accessibility continuously. Uh, how do we uh, make the audit? We start with uh, automatic uh, tools for checking uh, the structure things that can be checked automatically. So for example, if all buttons has uh, an alternative text or not, then we make a, a manual check uh, at code level. So uh, reading uh, the HTML or CSS or reading uh, the code for uh, native applications for checking if uh, all the things that cannot be checked automatically are uh, okay. So for example, reading order and if uh, the alternative text are correct or, or not. And then the, the last thing, but it is really, really important for us is to make the user experience test with different uh, testers we have using different uh, technologies, different assistive technologies. So from screen readers to magnifiers, uh, uh, zooming, uh, 
uh, changing the colors and all that to check that the work done uh, can be really useful because uh, accessibility means making a better user experience for people with disabilities but working while working um, for people with disabilities we make a better user experience for every end user that will use the, the software and the application and then we give the the client the the company a detailed report with all the problems we found we found about the accessibility so uh, alternative text reading order tags uh, and so on which is the value that we add to uh, an audit of um, an accessibility audit uh, the first one is that uh, we make a, a, the audit firmly based on WCAG. We are part of W3C, so we really know the, the specification and the standards. And so we, we base all our uh, accessibility audit on WCAGs. But then uh, we, we don't uh, only mm, check for WCAGs requirement, but for reading solutions, we check the requirements of the DAISY consortium, uh, the consortium we, have, we are part. Uh, so to check that uh, all the requirements for uh, digital reading solutions are meted. So for example, uh, being able to change the font size, uh, being able to change the color scheme, uh, being able to start and stop the reading uh, experience, being able to navigate the table of contents and so on. But another really important thing is that we don't only check for individual pages, but we check for the entire process. Uh, so the process can be uh, all online, but sometimes the process can also be, uh, be uh, go offline. So for example, when you register to a new website and you get an email and you have to click a link on email to, uh, to verify your email address, then in that case, we uh, check also the emails uh, that the user uh, receive. And also we also check, uh, for example, if there are important documents to read um, as uh, a privacy policy and all that, we check also those documents. So we, we make a wall check of the processes of the application. So login, registration, purchase, and then access to content and reading it. Then we have another activity, uh, which is the training. Uh, we started with uh, a lot of trainings and we have both trainings for publishers and for end users uh, with uh, um, print impaired users. And uh, we uh, can make uh, small trainings, uh, uh, only two hours trainings as an introduction to accessibility, or we can go more deep and train on how to produce born accessible publications using Microsoft Word or uh, InDesign, and then how to make uh, fully accessible websites working with the developers. So uh, in the code with uh, live examples in uh, HTML, CSS, and uh, for native applications uh, with the programming languages used. So Swift, uh, Kotlin uh, for Android and so on. And then we have uh, another module of uh, training about uh, metadata. Metadata are really important to uh, tell the end users the features of, of accessibility of different publications. So both on Onyx uh, standard and on schema.org standard. If you are interested, we have a brochure about uh, the training course we, we make. And we have some uh, some additional services for who want to start making a fully accessible uh, publication and born accessible publication we have the guidelines we developed we can uh, make uh, we can make available an help desk for training on the job so when you have a problem you can write us we can make uh, accessible templates for use. So for example, uh, graphical templates and fully accessible templates for Word, 
for PowerPoint uh, or for InDesign. We also um, do uh, accessibility check and, uh, and uh, remediation so we can make an audit of your documents or of your publications and eventually we can remediate them for accessibility. We do a lot of uh, uh, accessibility audits for PDFs, for example, for banks and for insurance companies. They don't use EPUBs usually, so we, we make them in PDFs. And then we have uh, an event uh, we uh, invented, uh, which is reading in, in the dark, which is an experience event where uh, um, uh, an author uh, read from his books. Uh, and we have also uh, a reader with, um, um, with, which is visually impaired and they alternate themselves. So uh, the auditory can listen uh, from the author and from the reader using assistive technologies, the, the content uh, in a dark room. So it is, uh, this is really an experience for, for the auditory and it is really great for uh, introduct uh, uh, um, an auditory to the problems of accessibility. Okay, and then uh, last but not least, we have uh, an online platform which is web-based and uh, it is the platform we use uh, in Italy for our certification program. Um, it is called uh, VCC, which means uh, verification, certification and conversion, which means uh, making audit of eBooks Certific, certify, uh, make the certification for uh, these ebooks and eventually remediate the accessibility of ebooks. Uh, it, it was developed for making uh, the certification of EPUBs. We have certified more than uh, 20,000 EPUBs in Italy since uh, 2011. And so it, uh, we use this platform a lot and we are ready to offer this platform as a service. Uh, it will follow the entire certification workflow so it can receive new EPUBs from aggregators or distributors automatically. Uh, we have an internal checklist uh, so where the operator uh, checking the file can check different requirements of accessibility it is fully integrated with EPUB Check, with ACE by DAISY and with SMART by DAISY, which are three fundamental tools for making uh, fully accessible uh, eBooks. And after, after the checklist, so after uh, checking that the accessibility of the file meets all the requirements, we have an automatic tool for creating um, Onyx uh, uh, metadata, and we are developing the tool for creating schema.org metadata. We have also developed uh, a, a small tool for making a multilingual accessibility summary. You know that accessibility summary is a new metadata, both uh, present in Onyx and in schema.org, where you have to present in a friendly uh, user way uh, the accessibility features of the file. So we have developed a tool for making the accessibility summary automatically out of our uh, checklist. And then uh, we have all the infrastructure for distributing this metadata, so Onyx metadata, to the whole supply chain. So to the books and print catalogs, to distributors, to aggregators, and to online stores. And we also create uh, a web version of the accessibility reports hosted on our service, on our servers. So uh, we, uh, you can always have an online um, page telling all the accessibility features of EPUBs. Those web pages are public available, so everyone can check the accessibility features of the EPUBs. And uh, this platform is designed for publishers. I mean, in this case, medium or big publishers who want to evaluate the accessibility of their files uh, internally. 
or for services companies who want to offer accessibility certi certification services for digital publications. We are also developing uh, the um, new features to the platform to being able to manage other digital formats. Uh, so we started with EPUBs, we support both EPUB 2 and EPUB 3, and we are now uh, trying to support other formats like PDFs or InDesign files, Word files, and PowerPoint files. Since uh, more and more uh, organizations that, that do not use uh, EPUBs as uh, first digital uh, as first digital uh, format, are asking us to make their publication accessible. Another thing which is really really important is that if the EPUB is not uh, accessible the platform has an integrated workflow for uh, make uh, the remediation. So for making the EPUB, for modifying the EPUB and making it accessible. Okay, I finished and I can leave the floor to Paolo. Uh, we work with Paolo with the um, platform they have uh, for uh, online reading, for making it accessible. We started last year and we finished some months ago. So Paolo will uh, explain okay, thank what you. we did. Thank you, Gregorio. Hi to everybody. I'm Paolo Casarini, Digital Development Manager at Imolino Publishing House, one of the most important academic publisher in Italy. And I'm very pleased to be here, invited for, uh, by Fondazione Lia talk to this uh, EDR Lab uh, online edition of uh, the Digital Publishing Summit. First, uh, I would like to introduce my company. Imolino is an academic uh, uh, publisher founded in 1954, which now publishes uh, 56 periodicals and about uh, 300 new titles each year mainly in humanities, economics, uh, and social sciences. We are constantly focused on academic market, and we have uh, developed three different uh, platforms uh, to deliver our production. The first is uh, uh, Revista Web, which is the most uh, authoritative Italian collection journals uh, in humanities and social sciences, dedicated to universities and private uh, or public institutions. Currently, it offers uh, articles uh, from over 80 journals uh, from Il Mulino and Carocci. Then we have uh, Darwin Books for monographs, where we deliver in streaming, online, on the web, our publication dedicated mainly to researchers and universities. But today I present the work done with the Fondazione Lia on accessibility on Pandora Campus the main multi-publisher platform in Italy for the academic path, uh, for the academic market uh, where we deliver our textbooks. In fact, I'm here to talk about a beautiful experience I had recently on accessibility and web software development. Uh, the experience is about the journey from an e-learning platform with a lot of features and content to an accessible learning platform with the same content and even more features than before. We've done this journey with the best traveling companion uh, we could ask, Fondazione Lia and uh, its experts. Now a brief uh, presentation of Pandora Campus. Uh, Pandora Campus is a multi-publisher learning platform developed uh, uh, especially for students uh, and teacher, uh, teachers uh, at the university and for companies, uh, mainly for corporate academy and internal training. On Pandora Campus, you can buy a personal access to textbook uh, or to a selection of uh, its chapters for one or six months. Uh, with this purchase, you can access uh, to the textbooks contents and to all digital resources uh, such as exercises, video, images, insights, and etc. All, dig all digital edition uh, in Pandora Campus is mainly available in HTML5 and now is fully accessible. 
As I said before, we have done this work with uh, Fondazione Elia and I want to ask to Gregorio, to, uh, that is the Chief uh, Accessibility Manager, uh, to describe the, the path we, we have done together. Yep. So as, as I mentioned before, uh, with Pandora Campus, we started with our first audit to check the level of accessibility of the wall uh, platform. And we made the audit in three steps. So the auto with the automatic tools, with the technical uh, checks and with the end users. And with the end users, we've found uh, some problems, for example, using menus, using the table of contents that were not uh, accessibility problems, but they uh, create uh, really big problems to end users uh, using uh, assistive technology, in that case, uh, screen readers. Uh, then we reported of all these problems to Pandora Campus, but before that we, we did the training. So we trained uh, the developers, but also the editorial staff uh, and, uh, um, uh, and, and all the people working uh, with Pandora Campus on what uh, accessibility means uh, for end users, with, which are the technologies used by, uh, by blind people and visually impaired people to access content. Uh, and also with a demo of uh, one of our testers uh, browsing their platform and counting all the difficulties that she had uh, to, to access the content. And I think that the demo was uh, the, the most important uh, part of all the training because for the, for the developers it was really important to understand how uh, this tester uh, was navigating their, their platform. Gregorio, may I add one thing? Sure. What it's important, I think, in the experience we had with Mulino is that was something that involved all the people from the publishing company. Right. So we have the top manager, but also the technical people and also the marketing and commercial people because they have a, a customer relationship with the student who ask a question and so on. So it was really... Um, the whole organization that moved to accessibility. It was not just a technical issue. It was a kind of choice to have the company moving on accessibility starting from Pandora Campus. So Pandora Campus was the, the first uh, platform they decided to use, but the idea is we want to move the full digital offer of the organization to an accessible level. So. And I think this is really, really important. So when we made the first training course, we had all the uh, top level uh, people in the company assisting to not all the technical discussion, but to the first part that is a one where we provide the general awareness and we explain the thing that Gregorio explained, which are the problem of a person who cannot access to the content. So it was clear to all the organization that it's an important path to follow right yeah. and after that we they developed uh, the new uh, user interface in an accessible way they fix all the different bugs and with two or three iterations we we've got a fully accessible platform and we've tested it with our end users and they were amazed of uh, all the different things that can be done on the platform and we finished two months ago. So it is really a, a new project. Thank you, Gregorio and Christina. Is that exactly uh, this, this, this is the point. And uh, now I'm back to my journey. Uh, and uh, uh, this journey uh, starts when, uh, uh, when I, I understand that uh, uh, when you build the software, uh, you can uh, do things so which uh, in the physical world you can't, can't, you can't. This is a very interesting uh, and uh, it's the proof uh, that uh, the digital publishing could be a concrete step forward for who are print impaired. In fact, in, in the physical world uh, we use uh, to think about devices uh, for uh, visually impaired people as an attractive and noisy, but in the digital world 
we have now the right technologies to uh, and, the, and the right standard to get uh, the best uh, for all. The magic is done using some techniques which hide in the code uh, what is useful for screen readers uh, or to test our interfaces with some tools which help us to optimize also the normal view uh, for other disabilities such as dyslexia. Obviously, under the magic result, uh, there is a lot of work, uh, training and testing made by skilled people and uh, accessibility experts. But the good news is that uh, now it's possible. In particular, it's possible to have a full featured web platform designed for publishing uh, with beautiful interfaces and layouts and also fully accessible. Uh, another example uh, of this are formulas. Uh, sometimes, in fact, the code layers uh, meet the UI, and this is, uh, for uh, for example, the case of formula written uh, in MathML. The source in MathML uh, uh, permits screen readers to interpret formula and to read them in mathematics uh, language. The same source is shown on the web page by a MathML viewer, enabling some feature like the zoom, uh, very useful for those uh, uh, who have difficulties in reading with uh, small characters. Uh, as, we see, as we have seen, uh, we have worked on uh, the invisible layer of the code, uh, giving to screen readers the right information uh, and we also uh, worked on functionalities. For example, uh, here we can see how we have transformed the typography option panel on our reader, giving the possibility to choose even more fonts. One of them is uh, open dyslexic, to select the most comfortable background uh, or, that, or the text dimension, for example. So we have understood that building an accessible web platform is uh, a very concrete way to realize a better platform for all uh, with the same content and uh, even more functionalities. Uh, yes, we, even if uh, the accessibility is a very common theme on the web, only few websites and uh, online services are fully accessible and give the right functionalities for uh, who are print impaired. We know that the institutions and governments uh, have enact, enacted uh, laws which, which force also private companies to prioritize this aspect, but we also know that the majority of the digital products uh, and services are not accessible. At the moment uh, in Italy, uh, there are no public funding uh, available to finance publisher to produce more digital editions uh, or to invest uh, uh, on the accessibility of their products. However, Il Molino Publishing House has chosen to make its it multi-publisher uh, uh, a learning platform, Pandora Campus, uh, fully accessible and compliant with the main international standards on accessibility and in particular for our print impaired. So, Thanks to Fundazione Elia, we have learned why accessibility is important and how to make our platform accessible. So thank you very much uh, to Fundazione Elia and uh, uh, to all of you for the attention and the consideration for our project. Well, thank you very much, Paolo. Uh, yes, this is a gorgeous um, platform, it seems. Uh, Pandora Campus with a gorgeous design and now fully accessible, so it's perfect. So we've got some questions. I will ask uh, them uh, uh, quickly. So the first one is um, from uh, Ted van der Tocht. Uh, and the question is, do you have already experience about making a library process, so a knee lending solution uh, accessible? Did you, did you do that or <laughs> already at uh, LIA? We are working with the Media Library Online 
uh, that is uh, the most important Italian organization uh, uh, that uh, offer library lending and who had an, an exceptional increase of use in this uh, COVID period uh, to make all their, all their apps accessible. So we are working with them. And uh, they also are moving from the Adobe Digital Edition DRM uh, with the LCP DRM and they become member of ADR Lab. So we, we also explain them that if they want to move to accessibility, they need to move the, uh, the whole ecosystem uh, uh, to accessibility. So I, I don't think they will be ready. Uh, we started now, so it will probably be something they will be ready for next year. But they, we have done a similar process uh, as we have done with the Mulino, with the different that they have some external supplier for the web development. So we also train their supplier, not only the internal people inside the publishing house. I've got another question uh, for Paolo this time. Uh, what was your main incentive uh, when you decided to do such a long journey? Because uh, going fully accessible is a long journey, I, I imagine. Um, we know that uh, the accessibility uh, uh, is a very important thing to, uh, to make uh, our platform uh, the the main the the main platform on uh, on academic uh, market so we consider that uh, this is a key point to to be uh, the um, the most attractive uh, platform on this market thank you paolo uh, another question uh, for um, uh, lia this time it's about um, cost. How much how much time uh, a consultancy takes, and what is the kind of cost that people must uh, be ready to spend? And is it a cost per process, per ebook? What what is the business model behind all that? We have two different uh, options. One is to become member. Uh, let's dif uh, let's make it a two different. Uh, situation. For trade books, we offer the service to members. So if someone wants to have the certification uh, and the evaluation of the ebooks title, we offer membership and the membership depends, uh, the membership fee depends on the numbers of title they submit to our services. Uh, for consultancy uh, and training, we have different situations. We do some uh, training, uh, let's say, by catalog, and that you pay uh, the, the fee for, uh, for each person. But when we do uh, this kind of uh, uh, consultancy and training for an organization, we define a project, so it's project-based. So it depends on uh, how many platforms they want to evaluate, uh, how many people we need to train, uh, which part of the training they want to do. Uh, Gregorio shows some modules. We, we can do only one module. For example, for Pearson uh, in Italy, we have only done the uh, image description training course uh, because they do the other part with the international uh, uh, Pearson organization. In some cases, we have done only the awareness course. So it's really a tailor-made project and the cost depends on how many modules, how many people, how many platform we need to, to evaluate. But it's, let's say it's not 100,000 euro. No, I, I mean, one important, thing, one important thing is that it is far more expensive to fix accessibility on, on a software on a website than to make it born accessible for from the beginning because uh, if you know how to make it so uh, it, it will take uh, less time and so it will be uh, cheaper and so it is really important to uh, put accessibility if it's possible at the design level so when you design a new software you design a new app you start with the accessibility training and consultancy. 
or if you are in, if you are uh, we we work with the um, lol media library online because they are in the phase of redoing the app they have and we are also working at two different levels there is a design level also the, the interface and so on and there is one more technical level we we work also step by step we don't think that the, it, it it's needed to do everything at this at the first step uh, for example, with the Molino, we defined some step following the plan they have of the different release of the platform. So it's something that can cope with the work that you normally do to, to release different version of the or update of or your platform, for example. If somebody wants to get more information, uh, do you have a brochure in English that uh, maybe you, yes. you could uh, add to this session? Because as you have seen um, in uh, this application, we can uh, attach to the, each session some documents and okay. attendees can go back to the documents later. So do you have a brochure in English? Yes, we can, we can add it. And okay. in any case, uh, uh, we are in the... In the I don't remember the name of the platform of the. Yep. No. So if you want to contact me or Gregorio, we are available. You can send us any question you wish. And maybe the last questions. This this pandemic uh, changes the way you operate. Yes. And how? Yes, uh, we move. Uh, we made the digital training courses even for organizations. So. We normally were used to do the, uh, the the training course in person, and we were able to do the same online. Even a long training course, we divided in different steps, but it was uh, fruitful anyway. As organization, we are quite uh, smart working anyway because uh, uh, Gregorio lives in Turin, we live in Milano. We were used to have. Uh, uh, conferences and uh, to use technology so we were lucky for that and having the 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 Buchichi, the platform as a web base we can access uh, the people who make the uh, checking of the file can do by home well, i hope we will not stay forever but uh, we will yeah. have uh, we will be we have been able to manage also the the process uh, remotely yeah, one thing that is quite strange is the user experience test we, we do with Wizard Impaired People, where we use, for example, Zoom. They share their screen, we listen the assistive technology, and so we try to follow the focus on the, on the screen to check if everything is okay, but that part is difficult. It can be done, but it's quite complicated We're using uh, uh, online conferences. Yes, we have a team of experts uh, in assistive technology who are blind, visually impaired, who are skilled people also in using technology. So this was uh, something useful for us. <laughs> you are muted, uh, Laurent. <laughs> Thank you, Well, Yes, these were all the questions that people have asked. So I think that uh, we can uh, end there. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you very much to all the attendees. Uh, so the video will be online, will stay online. Uh, the brochure in English will uh, be added. Uh, and uh, well, uh, we meet again on Monday for other webinars. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.